What's going on guys, and welcome to another tech related video sort of thing. Right, so, um, if you've been, key if you're one of those people like me who like to keep up together with these, like, computer part manufacturers and CPU manufacturers specifically for this video, um, you will know that AMD has recently been very busy in their efforts to try and stomp Intel as being, and having themselves being the best of the best in regards to CPU performance. Right, now, they attempted to do this by releasing the Ryzen 9 3950X for consumers, um, the Ryzen Threadripper 3970X and the Threadripper 3990X for server-side. Or for these really powerhouse PCs, because some people can't hack, need, like, like, 64 core PCs and CPUs for just editing, which is completely madness, but whatever. Um, but from the looks of these specs, these chips that they have made, may look completely out of their own league, especially with the um, 3990X having 64 multi-threaded CPU cores running at a total of 4.3 gigahertz at maximum boost clock, I think. Now, that is the highest core count of any server-side CPU except for AMD's Epic CPU on the market as of writing this script. However, how do they fare against Intel's current generation of both CPUs both consumer and server grade, and what's the difference in performance between them? Well, first of all, we need to establish how we're going to monitor them. To do this, we're going to be using 3D Mark inside a PC building simulator, because much like my video on the GPUs, I'm not in a position, however much I'd love it if I was in the position, but I'm not in the position to have all of this kit in order to do this in real life, so I'm going to be doing it virtually instead. Now, this heats a number of issues that I need to address before I start showing the results of what I found. First thing is that 3D Mark only measures based off of CPU clock speed. Most it well, I say that mostly CPU clock speed. It does take um, it does take like premise from um, from core count as well. So if you've got let's say a low core count CPU, but it overclocks to quite a high um clock speed, it will it may not run as well as somebody that as a CPU that's got a low clock speed but quite a high core count. So but 3D Mark is more of like CPU speed rather than the multitasking aspect. So, and I also try and overclock um, these CPUs, so they're at the best speeds that they could. But where they're all at their factory overclock when you install them in PC Building Simulator anyway. And when you try and push them beyond those limits, there are way too many variables um, to make it a fair test. So I just left it as what it was as I stuck it in, which is the um, manufacturer's recommended overclock turbo. Now. Also, if you want to measure CPU based off of its core count, um, instead of just a CPU speed, you'll need to use a program like Cinebench R15 or Cinebench R20, which I don't have access to in real life, nor in PC Building Simulator. But hold on to that thought, because we'll get to that later. The second point is, is that because of the way, because of the different CPUs we're going to be using, especially even just with the, the Ryzen um, CPUs, they have come with different motherboards. Now, server-side CPUs tend to have eight RAM slots, whereas the consumer-grade ones only have four. Now, that wouldn't make too much of a difference if we were just using Intel, but because we're dealing with the AMD in this video, their CPUs rely very strongly on RAM amounts and RAM speeds. So because of this, I'll be doing two tests, one with 256 gigs of RAM, which is what's inside the server boards, with all the slots filled, and then half of what of that leaving 128 gigs of RAM to match what is in the consumer boards at full capacity. So, the test benches. As mentioned before, most of the CPUs that I'm benching today have different sockets and chipsets, so different motherboards are needed. However, everything else that, um, across the test benches are the same. I'll be using the same type of custom grade water cooling, um, dual 2080 supers, water cooled obviously, a terabyte SSD, and a six, I think it's a 1600 watt power supply by EVGA, as well as 128 or 256 gigs of DDR4 RAM with XMP enabled. Now, if you want to know all of the motherboards that I've used in different benches, then I'll put them in the description. But for the sake of what is on screen and how like much space I've got, um, I'm just going to put the specs that are the same. I'll put all of the details down in the descriptions down below. So, which CPUs will I be testing? Well, I've already stated that we're going to be testing the Threadripper 3990X and the Ryzen 9 3950X, as well as the um, Threadripper 3970X. Now, I'll also be putting those CPUs up against the i9-9900K, which is the flagship Intel consumer, and the i9-9980XE. 
and which is, I think, if I'm right in saying, I might be completely wrong, but judging by the specs that I've seen, this is their um, flagship server-grade CPU from Intel. Um, and I also thought I'd throw in the i7-8700K just for a bit of fun. I know this is going to go horribly wrong with the 8700K. It's nowhere near going to match, um, you know, what we've seen, what we're going to get with the other CPUs. But just for a bit of fun, I thought, you know what, why not? So, what results did I end up with? Well, I was actually quite surprised by what I found. However, thinking about it a bit more now as I've just finished off writing the script and as I got to the end of what of the script, I wasn't sort of as surprised. But when I first did this, I was quite surprised by what I found. So... As we see in the um, on in the like graphs that you see on the board, I haven't I haven't actually made them yet as of I'm recording this audio, but um, as you can see on the screen now, the i9 9980X is right at the top with the Threadripper 39 3970X coming in second place with 11,099 like CPU like 3D Mark score. But what's more strange is that. As far as CPU score is concerned, the Threadripper 3990X comes up in fourth place, just below the i9 9900K, with which has a 10,962 score. Um, whereas the um, <coughs> whereas the um, 3990X has a score of 10,713. Now, originally I thought this was because of clock speeds, because obviously the 9900K has a speed of five gigahertz when overclocked, but that doesn't make sense with an i9 9980XE, which has a lower clock speed than both of them, but it still comes out on top. However, after doing some research, I think I might know what it is. I mentioned earlier that the video is, in the video that 3D Mark is very heavily based on CPU clock speeds rather than core counts, although they do count it, which one 9900K with 5 gigahertz doesn't trump everything. It's not right at the top of the board. Now, although the 3990 x has many more CPU cores than the 9980XE. It doesn't have as high of a clock speed as as the 9980XE. However, I did also say that the Threadripper CPUs are much better um, with their cores than they are with their clock speeds, and um, their score per core as is much better than anything else in the market. Now, in order to do that, to and to figure out what would be on top in that particular situation, I need to find out a way to test these CPUs in Cinebench R20. And luckily, I have the leaderboards to look through, and it's exactly as I expected. The 3990X absolutely smashes everything Intel's offering out of the park in both single core and multi core um, score. Their single core for the 3990X is 501. And with a multi score score of 21,803, leaving Intel far behind, even with the single core, with their top being um, their top CPU. I can't quite remember which one it is, I haven't looked at the. Um, you'll be able to see it on the screen, but um, with a sing their top CPU having a top score of a single core of 40, 448, and a multi core of 8,791. That is a massive difference. And the reason being is because. Threadrippers are very server based. They're very good for multitasking. They're not meant to be gamed on. Now, you can game on them, and people do game on them, but they're more for workstations. Whereas when you're like rendering a video, you need more cores rather than speed to do multitasking. You know, you could be rendering two different things at once, or running a server that's got like um five video editors on different PCs all editing on the same machine. That's what it's there for. It's not for gaming. So Really, this is sort of what this is the reason why I said right at this when I was talking about the scores at the start, why I was slightly confused by what I found, but looking at back on it now, it actually makes a lot of sense. So we have talked about the server side CPUs, which is a bit more of a complicated story because of how they work with more multitasking, which is it's useful when you have more cores to work with. However, what about consumer CPUs? Well, I've tested the Ryzen 9 3950X alongside the 9900K, and then I threw in the 8700K just for a bit of fun. And, well, in this case, the situation is completely opposite, with the Ryzen 9 3950X completely smashing both the i9 9900K, which had a score of 10,962, and the 8700K, which had a score of 8,340 in 3D Mark. And the 3950X had a score of 12,245. Now, when we then switch to Cinebench R20, the 3950X is the highest consumer-grade CPU on the list, with a score of 508 single core, 518 single-core, sorry, and 9,165 multi-core. 
which isn't a good look as a thread um as a thread ripper, but for consumer like CPUs, so it doesn't look as good. I mean, in comparison with a thread ripper, but for consumer grade CPUs, it's pretty damn impressive. Considering it that those CPUs are made for your average person, you and they are built for the gaming purpose. They're not made for like server side stuff. It's really quite impressive. And the i9 9900K had a 500 single core score and a 49,000 um, no a 4,914 multi core score. Only slightly higher than the 8700K, which had a 40, 479 single core and a 3,793. Um, multi-core score now you might be saying to yourself and rightfully so well if you're getting that much more performance in the ryzen 9 um 3950x then you must must cost a lot to buy it and it must be so much more than the intel chips that we've tested well yes and no if you look at the price between the 9900k and the 3950x which for reference are found on amazon it's about 250 pound price difference between them with the i9 with the 9900k coming in at 430 pound and the, and the 3950x coming in at 690. now i've said many times before now there's not much point paying a bit extra just for better hardware for better name when only going to get a small bump in performance but with that said, that said, in this case, I think it's completely necessary because not only do you get another two two k like score in three D mark, but you also get a much better single and multi core score for your extra two hundred fifty quid. Which, if you're a content creator or you do four K video editing or three D stuff like three D modeling or texturing or whatnot, then that extra performance will definitely be worth it. But what if you didn't want to spend that money on the new CP on a new CPU? What if you didn't want to spend six hundred, no, seven hundred quid on a new CPU? Well, you could say, oh well, I'll just go for the nine hundred K then because it does what I want for much less money. Well, let me go one step further and show you something else. That is the shiny new CPU that AMD just released called the Ryzen nine. Right, so is it Ryzen nine? I think it's the Ryzen nine or Ryzen seven thirty nine hundred X, which comes in with a three D Mark score of twelve thousand two hundred twenty five which is slightly lower and which is slightly lower than the 9900k and guess how much it costs well it costs 409 pound on amazon which is less than the 9900k by by about 20 quid right and it has a single core score of 511 and a multi core score of 700 what 7100 which is so much more than the 9900k for far less price and not only that it comes with 12 multi-threaded CPU cores as opposed to the 9900K which only has 8. So, there's only one step forward for Intel at this point for my, for my analysis of this situation. If they, need to if they want to stay afloat, they must adjust their pricing. Because once people realise how much more performance they can get for the same price by switching to AMD, which is the reason why I did it, I was going to go for the 9900K originally... But I knew that I, but then I found out that my CPU, I've got the Ryzen 9, no, I've got the Ryzen 7 3700X. So it's an 8 core CPU. Uh, I think it's, I got it, I've got it overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz, I think. Um, I only paid about 460 quid for, no, not 460 quid, 300, 260 quid for that, I think, on Amazon, more or less. Maybe a bit more, maybe slightly less, I can't quite remember. But, that's the reason why I changed to it because I just I could cut my budget pretty much in half with upgrading to from AMD to, from Intel to AMD, but getting the same amount of performance. Maybe slightly less than the 9900K in um, th in speed, obviously, because the 9900K overclocks to more. But as far as core price to performance in cores is concerned, it's so much more better going for that AMD. And honestly. I can't see Intel being any more than a choice for servers in the future just by the way it's going and the way that they're pricing are. And in fairness, Threadrippers are getting to the point now where I think even even all that could be about to change, where all we see in server-side CPUs now is just Threadrippers and no longer Intel chips, especially for these big servers who are trying to run games. You know, 64 CPU cores, 64 multi-threaded CPU cores on a server that's trying to run it like... A massive like game game like system where people play together. You got like, thousands and thousands of people playing together at once. Thread rippers. All it if now, I don't know how much a how much a business or a company would pay for a server CPU or how much they pay for a server in itself. 
And so I don't actually know how whether Threadrippers are actually a good price or not because I don't ever deal with things like that personally. But if the Threadrippers are a decent price for what you get for them, which I think just on the face fronts they are, bear in mind I haven't actually worked with any of these chips before. It could be so good for AMD, and especially if they keep going in the bandwagon that they are. You know, Intel are going to then try and jump their way back, but unless they unless they change their prices, they're not going to be able to get, especially with servers. I think the Threadripper 3990X, I think, was a massive blow to Intel, and as soon as it releases, go, it just kicked them out of the park. You know, so, honestly, unless Intel changed their pricing, especially, let's say they bought the 9900K down for about 400 quid to about 350, 300 that would, the sales of the 9900K would go up by about 20-30% I reckon because of the price and change. But no, Intel's so, so money hungry they just want to keep it at that same price. But anyway, that's not for me to decide, that's just what happens. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I just thought I'd be like, I was meant to do this video ages ago, but like everything else with this voiceover thing that I need to do, I need to put my voice into things. Um like covid got in the way and all this jazz so i do apologize that it's taken this long for me to do it as soon as the threadripper um cpus came out i then had to wait for them to come into pc building simulator so then i could benchmark them and then i found the r20 leaderboard and then covid kicked in and then i couldn't i had no my recording space no more so i had to wait you know so I've got so many videos in PC Building Simulator to do, you know, so many GPUs, CPUs, motherboards, RAMs, and all this, because we've had, like, three updates since COVID lock, um, and lockdown came into place, so um, I've got so many more videos that I can do in relation to, um, like, PC stuff, and I'm really looking forward now that I can actually record stuff myself, so if you want, if you do enjoy um, this type of content, do give it a like and subscribe so I know that you enjoy it. If you have any suggestions of things you want me to look into in, like, tests and experiments or things you want to, you know, me to talk about in relation to PC stuff, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to have a look at it. So, I'm going to tell all that. Hope you guys have enjoyed and I shall see you all later. Bye!